students um what we're doing we're covering it between us at the moment um we're getting used to the technology which we've got a grip on now uh and so from uh, from this week we're gonna you're gonna see some different faces during the week answering questions giving their perspective and talking a little bit more about specific topics uh, as we go through so later on in the in the live i'll run you through who's on this week and what they like to be talking about uh, what i want to do for now then if angus just uh, if you want to introduce yourself give give the guys a little bit of an idea who you are what your background is um i'm going to have a look through some of the comments and questions that are coming up so guys sure. if i'm looking off the screen um that's what i'm doing i'm looking at your questions if you've got questions pop them in the comments below down here um, and we'll get through answering those. We're going to try and do this relatively quick fire. So let's have lots of questions this evening. Um, yeah. uh, we've got a comment here that you've got no sound. Um, we seem to be transmitting OK. So maybe if you could just check your uh, check your connection, check your volumes yeah. up. If you're on a device, it may be that you've got the little silent, uh, uh, the, the little silent thing up. Um, so just give that a go. And let's have a little look. So I can see my my little green lights flashing on the microphone to say that that it's picking me up. So I've got, I've got, I've got sound on my on my phone, which is sitting next to me. Great. Okay. So we've got a few more people saying I can hear you. I can hear you. Sound all good. So if you are struggling with the sound, guys, maybe just log off, uh, log back on again, and see if you can connect to us. Make sure your volume's up. Make sure the little uh, clicker on your phone or your iPad is is switched on. If uh, if you're on a device rather than a laptop. Okay, so yeah. Angus, over to you. I'm going to check some questions. You give the guys a little bit of uh, an idea of who you are and, and why you're here to help them. Uh, so for those of you who don't know me, my name's Angus Griffin. I'm one of the Asset Academy UK mentors. Um, been mentoring for a couple of years now. Um, my life before that, before coming through the training, uh, exactly the same as all you guys are doing right now was as a lawyer actually specializing in uh, financial services litigation so actually a lot of the work that i undertook actually came out of the financial crisis back in 2008 um uh, but stopped doing that a couple of years back to uh, jump into the mentoring uh, my pro my kind of uh, probably portfolio um, to be honest, it's got a little bit of everything in it, pretty much, apart from just probably service accommodation and new builds. I do pretty much everything else. Um, it probably uh, centers on buy, collect, HMOs, and some commercial property. Um, again, geographically spread all over the uh, UK, um, probably with the, the most of it being in the northeast of England, but stuff in Yorkshire, Manchester, Hertfordshire, London. Um, so a decent geographical a graphical spread across the country. Great. I'm just popping my microphone back on. Great. Okay, so that's useful for the guys to know um, what what you what you're up to. The fact that you've come through uh, the trainings as well. Um, just give us a little bit of a perspective then on how you're feeling at the moment. You know, what what do you see in your? We talked before about attack and defence strategies. Yeah. So what are you doing to defend your portfolio and going forward? What are you looking to do to to grow? Where do you see the opportunities? So I think I think if we just put the health concerns aside and we look at it purely from a from a from a property perspective, which I guess is what most people are on for, and also from an economic perspective, um, I think you know kind of what I'm doing is quite similar to what you might have heard some of the other uh, mentors and trainers doing. So from a defensive side of it, I'm kind of in um, uh, property analysis mode. So again, doing a, a risk uh, analysis for my current portfolio. Um, in terms of uh, who people are, what they do, where their income sources come from, are they employed, are they self-employed, um, and effectively giving each one of those a, a high, medium or low risk rating. Now, obviously, um, we will have had uh, some relief from the Chancellor's announcement that they're going to effectively guarantee 80% of people's wages on Friday, um, but I'm not taking anything for granted given that that seems to be working on the basis that companies have got to pay and then claim it back um, and cash flows are real worry for people right now and um, how long it'll take for that money to get back into their hands um, will be a concern for uh, some business owners with employees 
And so how I'm looking at my portfolio is I'm looking at kind of what I see as the low risk um, tenants, the ones who I think will have no problem or little problem paying. And I'm doing a cash flow analysis. So for example, does the business cash flow on their income alone? Um, you know, kind of if that's not the case, uh, what what's the gap between what I think is the minimum to cash flow of the business versus, um, uh, you know, kind of what, what is guaranteed to come through the door. And I'm just doing a bit of modeling uh, like that to understand exactly where I sit. Um, I guess I'm in the slightly more fortunate position that um, a lot of my tenants rely on some form of benefit. Um, so, um, you know, kind of, if, if you like, I haven't got a job to lose. Um, so so um, I never thought I'd say that with some form of, of, of kind of relief, but I do now. Um, uh, in terms of, you know, the tenants who I feel at risk, I think it's important to be communicating with them to see where they're at. Um, not only from a financial standpoint, but from an emotional standpoint as well, to see if there's anything we can do to help them, to let them know that they're not on their own and they shouldn't be afraid to talk to us about struggling financially because we're not there to punish them, we're there to, to help them and the more we can help them, um, we can so we, we can certainly help them more if they communicate with us and we, we put together a plan. Um, so really communicating with those people and, and understanding um, you, you know their predicament being very sympathetic to that um i think that um don't get me wrong i think i've also had a few chances who uh, see it more as a um rent holiday more than a rent deferment and um, so we are enforcing the government guidelines in terms of checking not only that actually they're affected by coronavirus they're not they're not trying it on i we can get evidence to, to suggest that but also um just making sure that we get evidence potentially in their bank statements as well um as to you know if you think someone's trying it on you ask them for three months bank statements you'll 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 all of a sudden be able to see if, if they are trying it on or they're genuinely in financial hardship they genuinely should be um uh, you, you know they genuinely it's right to work with them um, I think as well with with my current tenants, especially my HMOs, I think it's a it's a it's a great opportunity to kind of foster relationships with their, their HMOs because I understand the concept of co-living, and I understand um, the idea that everyone socialises together as a cohesive group, and that doesn't often happen within HMOs as far as I've seen. But now there are guys stuck in those HMOs twenty four seven. You know, and they're going to have to socialise with the people around them, whether they like that or not, because that, that might be their family for the next, um, uh, you know, few weeks. Who knows? Maybe longer, a few months, depending on what the government decide to do. So I think we're also taking this opportunity to, to, to kind of to kind of try and bring tenants together. So we've we've done a bit of we've put Netflix in. Um, some of them we've we've offered to buy each house, um, each HMO, kind of a takeaway, so they can they can bond together a bit. Um, if that's something they want to take us up on based on their own personal circumstances. So I think there's a good opportunity there to try and support people in uh, different ways, uh, you know, uh, as they're kind of struggling, especially the people who who really they aren't surrounded necessarily by their family and maybe they are they are on their own. Um, so so defensively, that's, that's kind of what we're doing. Um, offensively, um, I think that it's hard not to, to talk about offense without talking about where you see it generally going. Um, what was interesting for me is that I don't play poker because I don't gamble. Um, but from what I understand, um, I invest, I don't gamble. Um, from what I understand in terms of poker, I see it as the government went all in on Friday. And they basically said, right, we are going to spend our way out of this. OK, um, we are going to support the country um, and we're going to do whatever it takes to get people through this financially. Um, and that, that's a really positive move. And, and why I see that as a positive move is as well is because I see this as a relatively short term problem. So I think there will be some short term pain. Um, I think some people will undoubtedly suffer from it, but I don't see it um, as being something which is going to um, cause huge problems to potentially property prices in the long term. Because the government has already said they're going to support people, they're going to they're going to spend the way out of it. I'm pretty sure that other measures will be coming in as gaps are identified. A lot of people talk about what happens with self-employed people. So as gaps are identified, um, government plugs it, and I think that um, not right now because it's a little bit uncertain. 
and I would I would be sitting on my hands right now, um, until I until I have a, more confidence that what I've just said is is kind of bearing itself out. Because as I say, things are changing daily. What I might have said might have been different on Friday, but it's not. Um, um, but certainly, I think that in the future there are going to be some fantastic opportunities for the people who are in a position to act on them as things start to get better. But and as savvy property investors can spot those opportunities, whereas the general public and the public at large don't have the confidence as yet to kind of to kind of to kind of spot those opportunities because I don't think anyone's going to be buying apart from people like us in the immediate aftermath of this crisis starting to abate. Yeah, I think you're right. I think <clears throat> there's going to be a lot of opportunity, but um, we talked yesterday about the, the concept of, uh, I think the phrase Mark used was, let, let the, at the moment the knife is falling, uh, we need to let it bounce a couple of times before we know it's safe to try and yeah. catch it. So, um, you know, I'm sure over the next uh, few months when we resume mentorships, uh, we're going to see a lot of opportunity out there and, uh, and and we're going to have some really good times with mentees uh, and we're going to help them do some really, really good things. Mm -hmm. um, you've made some good points there about supporting tenants. You know, as an organisation is about helping people. You know, we are there to make money, no doubt about it. But um, I, I'm encouraged by what I'm seeing in our Facebook group in particular as to how people are approaching this versus some of the amateur Facebook groups out there and other people are seeing this, you know, a little bit op opportunistically um, and also, you know, sort of talking down tenants. As you say, there will be a couple that that will try it on. Um, but, you know, we've got, um, you know, we, we've got a responsibility here to look after tenants because most of them are going to be worried about their jobs. You know, most of them, you know, are, are, are going to be wondering what happens to next month's paycheck, the paycheck after. So, um, yeah, some good points there, really good points. We're going to start with the, the Q&A now because we've got a few questions in the comments. So um, I'm going to answer the first couple because I've had a chance to, to have a look at what's happening on the comments. If you want to add any comments, please do so at the bottom and we'll pick those up. Uh, you'll also see that I've, I've put along the bottom there who's speaking uh, for the next few nights. Um, we've got Tracy, Cartland and Kim Fabian covering Monday night. Uh, they'll be doing a, a Q&A. Tuesday, we've got Rohan and Harminder. They're going to be covering a section on managing fear and anxiety. Uh, for those of you that, that have met Rohan, those of you who haven't, um, you, you maybe have heard of, of the work that he's doing, not only in property, um, but he's a huge um, personal development uh, coach, trainer, um, and he's got some fantastic work in this area um, that, that he's going to bring in. Uh, he's going to relate it to property, but also, you know, we, we understand that as students, um, you know, you guys might be feeling a little bit anxious, a little bit fearful at the moment as well. You know, we're here for you. And, and that's that's one of his specialisms. One of his passions will be to help people through a, a time like this. This Caroline and Nick Clayden. Uh, Nick is the, the head mentor. Uh, he, he leads the team of mentors of, for Asset Academy. Um, and Caroline's one of our three day basic trainers. So um, some really interesting perspectives as well as to what's happening up in Scotland. So for our, our Scottish guys, you know, they'll they'll be uh, giving a more Scottish perspective, but they work across the country as well. So they're, you know, again, real, real uh, value to add there. So the first question I'm going to pick up here, um, we, we've been asked this a couple of times by our landlords. Uh, if people cannot be evicted, why would they pay rent until they absolutely have to? Well, the message we need to give tenants here is that we are there to support them. Uh, but this isn't a rent holiday. This isn't a rent freeze. This isn't a, a period of time where they can opt not to pay rent. What the government are saying is that we can't evict people as a result of losing their income because of coronavirus. But that doesn't mean that the debt isn't incurring. So they are still accruing debt. Uh, and that does mean that whereas we come out of the back of this, especially given what was announced on Friday, the, the financial support, you know, those that, that lose their job and go for the support, whether it's housing benefit, whether it's a temporary job, you know, that they will have a, a smaller debt because they'll be they'll be having some kind of financial support, whether it's a temporary job or housing benefit. Um, and I think then us as landlords, it's our duty then to put a payment plan in and, and work with them. Um, really, you know, what what um, what we're seeing and the, the mood music coming out of the big landlord organizations is that, you know, once once we're into this or if if people are 
uh, just trying it on basically um, this this isn't there to protect them it's not there to protect the people that are taking advantage it is there to protect the people who genuinely have fallen on hard times yeah. um, and uh, you know we, we as landlords you know properly trained landlords we're obviously going to help people who are trying to help themselves um, Angus do you want to pick up the one here about uh, bridging somebody's just got yeah, into yeah. A, I think a I just, just want to add on that I think what's really important is um, let's not get carried away about people not wanting to pay their rent because yeah. If you are a professional person, you have a job um, and you don't pay your rent and um, you either get evicted or you do a run LXC, that's going to follow you around. OK, so when you go to your next place, they're going to be like, well, let's get a landlord reference. Well, you're not going to get a positive landlord reference. Um, mm -hmm. You know, if you have a CCJ um on you because you've been evicted or someone's chasing you for rent arrears well that's ruined your credit history and you'll find very few landlords willing to rent to you um, so i think if you have um any kind of morals about you actually there is um you know real impetus on you to to pay because actually it can make things really difficult in your life going forward you know if if you're on maybe some form of income support benefits and you don't pass it on You'll get away with that for a couple of months, but after a couple of months, we can apply to the council for direct payments. Um, so I think there is a there is a strong impetus on tenants to pay. Um, sorry, just on the bridging one. So we've just bridged and wanted to flip the property. In I presume that's in twelve months, Dean. Um, do you think we can extend the bridge? Um, I think if it's hard to say what the property market is going to look like in twelve months, I would hope that given what we've heard about the spread of the virus and and the way that they're looking at dealing with it, the time skills we're talking about we will be living in a very different world in 12 months it might not be fully back to what we see as normal but i, I can see the world being hopefully very different by then uh, hopefully in a far more positive um sense i think that um you know flipping a property into in today's market is extremely difficult and i, I wouldn't be starting one right now i'll be sitting on my hands uh, as I think you've heard from Mark. Um, but I think if you've got a 12-month bridge, that may well see you through the worst of it. That being said, to protect myself, I would certainly be just having a conversation with the bridge now to say, listen, I'm, I just want to explore, you know, in uncertain times, um, I just want to explore all, you know, potential outcomes. So if um, we're in a similar situation in 12 months and I can't sell the property, what options do you have right now available to me? And I might keep that under review with the bridge on, say, a monthly basis because they'll be reacting to this. What they say now will be different to what they'll be saying in a week. We're seeing the mortgage market starting to react to this now. Um, so I think communication with your bridging lender is really important. Um, but hopefully, given that you've just started the bridge, you've just started the refurb, hopefully as you go through that, and the fact that it might be slightly delayed because of access to tradesmen, um, that may work in your favour in that, that, that we may be looking at a far more positive market in nine, 12 months down the line. Yeah, that sort of dovetails into um, one of the questions that, that somebody's put here now about would, would you go into a flip right now? Um, you know, I think picking up on both these questions, obviously, we always teach at Asset Academy that you need your two exits from a deal. So if you've gone into something that you thought was a flip um, with that as your first exit, you should really have checked that it's going to at least cash flow uh, neutral if you need to hold it as a rental. So it may be that you need to exercise that second exit. The other option I would say, we talked a bit about this on yesterday's Q&A, is about raising money from private angel investors. You know, now is a great opportunity to go out and talk to people about their plans once things settle down um, on on becoming an angel investor. The, the, the base rates dropped twice in two weeks from not very high position in the first place to an all-time low in the UK. This is a great opportunity. What once Once the initial shock's gone, for uh, people to get their money out working for them you know people will be getting literally nothing as savers in the bank um and that's a great opportunity for us yeah. um we we uh, we were looking the other week there was a group of 20 odd of us uh talking about angel finance and between us we had about seven and a half million pound uh, borrowed uh, and the average rate that we were paying was around about seven and a half percent and I, I can see that coming down even further as people are just looking to do something and, and if you're on a bridge at the moment your opportunity potentially is to get an, an angel with fairly deep pockets 
um, and offer them an asset backed uh, an asset backed. So basically, get off the bridge, offer them first charge security on the property, and then you're not uh, looking at the the, um, uh, the 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 fees, the extension fees. If if you do struggle to get off that bridge. So, you know, get yourself on the creative finance course if you've not done that already or sit sit in as a refresher um, and, uh, you know, let, let's let's put those skills to work now. Let's 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 drop the cost of our projects. I think well, actually Russ, it's interesting what you said there about angels, because that's something I've seen um, actually coming out of the woodwork this weekend. So I've um, had two people approach me um, who are who I've not dealt with before they've proactively approached me to talk about investing because of obviously the interest rate cuts so um that's already coming out of the woodwork even at this early stage which i would not which personally i wouldn't quite have expected yet but it is it is happening yeah okay um so we've got a few comments about uh just interesting just going to pick this up um there's there's some um questions about uh, or comments rather about how Boris Johnson and the government have approached this. Uh, we're not going to go into the political side of this, but one thing I would say is what they're doing is they're making decisions, you know, um, and right or wrong, time will tell whether they've, they've made the right decisions. But what you what you can't afford to do and what the government can't afford to do is dither. Um, so really, I think, that, you know, the, the message coming out of, of the approach to this is you've got to look at your situation you got to maybe take some advice, which is what Boris is going to be doing. So, you know, get around your mentors, get around your coaches, um, listen to the, the Q&As that we're putting on here, make a decision about what you're going to do with your portfolio. And then if you need to adjust your course along the way, so be it. You know, and that that's, um, you know, that that's something that we'll be here to help you with over the next, you know, weeks, months, years, um, as one of the UK's longest established property training companies. So uh, a few more questions and comments about arrears, um, just to back up Angus's point here that, you know, th this debt isn't going to uh, disappear. If people are trying it on, um, you know, that they will need to get a payment plan. There will be CCJ. So there's a, there seems to be a lot of nervousness tonight around, um, you know, how to deal with people not paying. You know, and I think the government's response, we're, we're likely to get a good 80 percent of our rent i would say um if you're looking at your numbers over the next few months i would work on maybe a 20 percent drop in rental income um and that should for most you know if you've bought along the lines that we teach at asset academy you're going to find that your deal is probably cash flow neutral but unlike the amateurs you're not going to be losing money straight you know straight away a little bit of time to recover work with your tenants help them get the, the discretionary housing payments help get them the top up get them the temporary jobs and then things should get, get back to normal angus do you want to come in with the next one yeah so there seems to be a question here about, about um i think there's a lot of questions we can sum up as as um i'm about to put in an offer um uh, you know should i hold off or continue um i'm due to complete should i press ahead um, there seems to be a few questions. That's a theme, I think, at the moment. My, my take on that is um, uh, I'm telling everyone, just hold off for now. Okay, If you can hold off, just hold off for now. That doesn't mean that um, you necessarily want to pull out, but it's the same kind of thing. It's conversations. It's conversations with um, the vendor of the property, the vendor's um, representatives to... Uh, just say, listen, you understand the current circumstances. Um, you'll understand the fact that obviously there's a bit of nervousness around it. Um, potentially putting finance in place is definitely starting to take longer. Um, and you just want to hold off and, and see what happens. Now, that, that wouldn't be the best news for them necessarily. But speaking practically, they're not going to have a queue of other buyers in most, and I would say the vast, vast majority of circumstances, um, standing out the door to pick up where you've left off. So in the vast, vast majority of cases, the vendor will uh, be kind of understanding of where you're coming from. Um, as I say, I think I think the the outcome, as far as I see it going forward, looks positive. But we're, we're very early days. Um, I think there's still some more pain to go through first, potentially in terms of what measures the government has to introduce um, and the effect that that might have on, for example, the economy and the stock market. And what I want to do is I want to maybe just hang on for two, four, six weeks till um, it feels like that is coming to an end 
and they've got it under control and restrictions are starting to ease before I make the decisions on whether I want to press forward or not. Um, it's also an opportunity to, at that stage, work out if you're buying well in today's market. I, you know, are you buying at the right price for the strategy that you're looking at? But if I would say at the moment, conversations with the vendors, putting stuff on hold. So it's not a no, it's just that not right now. Yeah, good point. So there are going to be opportunities coming out of the back of this. Um, potentially the option to renegotiate, um, you know, go back. If you don't ask, you don't get. Um, you know, there'll, there'll be people, as you say, looking to complete a deal. Um, and, and it may well be that they're looking to complete rather than risk losing a sale. So the opportunity to go back, renegotiate. Um, and, and there will be a lot of amateurs out there who think that now's the wrong time to buy. You know, as we say on a number of the courses, it's bizarre in, in any other walk of life. Uh, you know, the vast majority of the public would wait until the Boxing Day sales and then go shopping what the vast majority of amateur investors seem to do is wait until we're at the top of the market when prices for property are high because they think it's a good time to get into property and you know what we teach at asset academy is really when to buy and i think we're coming into a real period where there'll be a buying opportunity we just need to make sure that we're as close to the bottom of the market as we can so that we see the upside as we come out of the the economic difficulties I think it's really important and I think there is really an opportunity here because um, we are in dark times at the moment, but it, it feels to me that those are, are temporary um, and they're driven by this, this black swan health event that no one could have foreseen. Um, you, you know, kind of it's a complete, you know, kind of freak event. Um, but I think that um, what you've got to look at what the government are doing, the government absolutely ploughing money into the economy they're doing quantitative easing they're putting money almost directly in people's pockets they're giving money to businesses okay that money isn't going to go away once that money's in the system it's in the system okay so um there's going to be a small window probably in the next 12 to 18 months is my take on it where and um, there's fantastic buying opportunities for educated investors because ultimately what that money's going to do sloshing around in the economy is when all this uncertainty gets away and when we're allowed out of our houses because we've got all this money but we can't spend it at the moment okay then we will all have this money and that money will start whipping around the economy and i think what we'll actually see is it will fuel a bit of a economic boom going forward the government are going to be wanting to be putting in a feel-good factor after what's happened and um, there's all this money sloshing about in the economy so this opportunity coming up could be, you know, the, the, the greatest opportunity that we've certainly had in the past five years and probably the next five or six years, given that that money is probably going to stimulate a lot of growth. Yeah. There's a question here about um, should I uh, proceed with an offer I've put in about a ski chalet in France? Um, there's quite a niche question, but I'm going to pick up on it for a couple of reasons. Um, one is that my personal opinion is that after the back of this, we are going to see a huge push from the government to to back British business. You know, so that I, I can see marketing campaigns around staycations in the UK. Um, people are going to be obviously looking at the, the cost of going abroad. Um, you know, who knows what other countries are going to be doing and people's economic situation. Um, the other point I'd make is that it, as an investment, you know, what we teach at Asset Academy is uh, about cash flow and about buying in a market that you really understand. It, it's not something that we teach, uh, you know, in general uh, about buying abroad. So, you know, think very carefully about the, um, you know, the legal process you're going into, the finance arrangements that you're going into. Um, my you know, my two pennies worth on this, I think there's going to be a lot of a push for um, staycations in the UK. So, um, you know, our, our service accommodation course is going to be um, one to really watch out for in the next, you know, six six months or so, because there are going to be opportunities for, for that kind of a business. There's going to be a lot of um, those industries that close down. Unfortunately, people decide that maybe, you know, this is the end of their, their career. They were going to retire in the next 12 months anyway. They may well decide to shut the doors. There will unfortunately be some casualties in that arena, and that will give opportunity for new newcomers to the market in the UK. So I would say, um, you know, the serviced accommodation course. Uh, there's a couple of other questions in here about which which of the Asset Academy advanced courses are going to be the most uh, key over the next few months. Well, again, the honest answer is all of them in a way. 
um you know if you think about it right from the basics the guys of you that are out there building your portfolio starting off um the momentum course is going to be really useful in that sense because it's going to give you the basics it's going to help you understand um how to run the numbers uh, you know the, the, the economics of of a lot of areas is going to change as a result of this so we're all going to need to go back to basics follow the the cash flow calculations look at demand in the area um you know so so there's going to be a lot of that and i know barry's planning on how we drip feed some of these activities for you for the next few weeks and months um until we can get the the courses back up and running there is consideration about how we get some of the advanced stuff streamed over the next few weeks and months as well there'll be more coming out from asset academy about that um, in the short term once we've got the technology sorted and the content recorded but look all the courses are going to be useful creative finance there's going to be a lot of opportunities to raise money social housing arguably you know would have been best in hindsight to do that six months ago so you know how to help your tenants now but there's going to be a, a, a you know over the next few months there's going to be a lot of tenants still relying on housing benefit who've never needed that before so you understanding that system is going to be key lots and lots of options uh, for lots of opportunities for lease options coming up so the asset academy course around lease options is, is going to give you you know huge opportunity over people that just don't know how to help people in negative equity so there's going to be lots of stuff in there and, and you know i could go on about all the courses each of them will have their place over the next um few months as you build your strategy but it, it will be your strategy working with your mentor to decide you know how to implement that in the area that you're looking to invest in so uh, hopefully that's covered a couple of questions about uh, how you can access some help from asset academy uh, angus i'm going to hand back to you whilst i flick through the next couple of questions yeah i think actually one important thing as well is is that whatever course you go on like all of the trainers are sitting there now um working out their strategies for taking ad advantages of um you know the movements in the market once this happens and as part of those courses every single trainer is going to pass that information on to you so it almost kind of yeah go on the course which fits with your strategy but within the context of those courses all of the trainers are going to be talking about you as to where they see the opportunities in the market right now barry touched on it the other night in terms of um lease options and i'm sure you'll be thinking about the way he tweaks his course based on um you know kind of what he's seen in the market so i think um, you know it's more just getting yourself along to the course because it's a good way of keeping up to date and understanding what people are seeing as well as refreshing your knowledge yeah. and i think you know this like say i think someone asked questions about live stream um uh you know kind of as i understand it you know there's going to be a lot more live stream being done i think Russ, you'll know a bit more about that um but yeah there will be a lot more live streams so people can access it and obviously there's a lot more additional resources coming your way for example you know kind of these q and a's uh, on a nightly basis um I, I imagine there'll be more stuff like that rolling out as we learn to roll with what's going on cool okay right we're into the last 15 minutes or so of tonight's q a so uh, we'll try and hammer through the next few questions um, pretty promptly get as many done as we can um, so we've got a couple of people here talking about remortgaging um, and lender rates. So I've read a comment on Facebook about a lender keeping the valuation of a property, but only lending 70% now instead of 75. As Angus said earlier, lenders are starting to react to this. There will be changes over the next few months. Uh, we're trying to get a broker who understands how, what we teach with Asset Academy uh, onto one of these q and A specifically. But obviously we need to just let the lenders settle and react to things first so that we can give you the most useful information. But, but lenders are in the short term likely to be a little bit more conservative with what they're doing. Um, but obviously the, the bank base rates dropping will mean probably that rates will drop in the next, I would say, month to three months. I think, um, I think as well with, with lenders, one thing you've got to bear in mind is that they haven't got time to refresh their, given, given the amount of people contacting them, who are worried, who are just trying to find out what's going on. Lenders haven't got time to look at their entire product offering and tweak them based on you know, their risk analysis. So the easiest thing for them to do at the moment is just make really wide ranging decisions that we're gonna pull these products, we've seen some 80% LTV products pulled. And um, you know, maybe we're gonna you know, just stop, stop these products for now, um, which is prudent on their part, but it's a short term, short term measure. So, um, 
you know, I wouldn't say that what we're, you know, the, what we're seeing in the market now is representative necessarily of where lenders are going. It's just them being prudent, actually saying, we don't know what's going on. So anything that we're not 100% sure about, we're going to just roll back on a little bit. Okay. There's another couple of questions in here about uh, completing on deals and uh, starting refurbs. So there's a couple of things here, I would say, a couple of angles to consider. One is um, if you're about if you've got a property that you're already on, uh, you already own it, you're, you're perhaps on a bridge or an angels. Um, look, at the moment, the, the contractors can work. Most of them are self-employed and, and they're not sure what the government are doing. There will, I think, almost certainly be more support for the self-employed. The difficulty the government have is that they, they can't reach the self-employed as easily as they can people on payroll. So these guys, you know, my experience that the guys on my site at the moment um, converting a house into six bed HMO, um, you know, they're desperate for work. They're, they're working weekends because they're trying to stockpile cash um, because they don't know when they're going to be told not to work. Um, we're obviously making sure that they're all distancing themselves, that things are, are safe, secure on the site. Um, but we're also looking at um, you know, making sure that we've got the cash reserves in the business so that, um, you know, if, if something happens, if we're on lockdown for longer than we expect um, and there's finance going out on those properties, that we can cope, we can survive. So, again, good time to be talking to angel investors and good time to be raising money. Look at your options. But there is definitely a value in holding some cash. Um, you know, so a couple of questions on here about should I refinance now? Should I further advance properties that I've got? Should I remortgage my own house? Look, guys, these are all questions you need to be talking to your financial advisors about. Um, you know, as mentors, we can help you on a one to one basis. Um, we can look at your situation. We can help you think of the questions you need to be asking yourself. Um, but obviously, we, we can't give financial advice. That That's not really our remit. Um, you know, what I would say, if you've got some cash, I think a buffer is good. Um, you know, I wouldn't rush out and spend everything. But if you, you know, if you're raising angel money, as long as you've got a plan as to how that's going to be refinanced back out, um, you know, then then potentially getting sites, getting a crack on with sites and getting them finished for when when people need houses afterwards. You know, we're we're pursuing a strategy at the moment of looking at who's in a who's uh, single people in a one bed flat who might need to downsize to HMOs in the next few months because they want to reduce their living costs. They want to make certain their their individual rent includes everything rather than rents and bills and whatever. So that, that again, there's going to be opportunities uh, in the different market. That would be a good reason to get yourself on the HMO course or, or on the live stream when it comes on. Um, so, you know, a few different angles in there, but make sure you've got a pot of cash, um, you know, to, to see you through the next few months. Angus. Yeah, I think I think there's questions. Uh, there's questions on um, people who've exchanged. There's a question on um, exchange on a property due to complete on Wednesday. Um, should I get on with it and redo it, um, or ask for completion to be delayed and conserve cash? I don't know. That's the one you were touching on. Um, but I think you know. I think you've got to look at your numbers. I think um, you've got to see what it works at if um, there's a little bit of. Um, softness in the market and some of the um, done-up values don't quite come out because surveyors have been a bit pessimistic further down the line. I think if you can get a delayed completion um, to just get over this initial hump to try and allow some confidence to drip back into the market, then that would be my preferred option. Um, but like I said, if you've done your numbers right, then it should still be cash flowing in any case. If you're encountering a scenario where you get a bit of a down valuation, or you've got a lender who's offering you 70% LTV all of a sudden because they've got a bit nervous, um, whereas you were hoping to get 75%, then the fact that you've got excess cash flow when you've done your numbers, um, and when we do our numbers, we should always have significant excess cash flow, then that's where potentially long-term angels can come into play. So people who you can... All that, that shortfall off, but pay them out of that uh, cash flow which you're getting off the property um, so that you at least balance it up in the short term so that you're at least cash flow neutral Okay, to get over what we see as, a, uh, at this point, hopefully a relatively short term uh, problem. 
Okay, um, Angus, this might be one for you because I know this is um, kind of what, one of your specialisms um, to a certain extent. So there's a question here. Do we think there's any risk of holding too much cash in one bank account? We're holding money ready for a purchase in a couple of weeks and it's over the £85,000 guaranteed in one uh, account. Do, do you want to just touch on a, kind of what 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 the what the, the student there is referring to um, and your thoughts on, on that? Yeah. So... Um... Back in the 2008 financial crisis, you'll all know that some uh, some banks fell over. Um, some banks had to be propped by the government. If a bank falls over, what the government will do is, is they will step in with something called the Financial Services Compensation Scheme. And with savings, they, they will guarantee your savings in a bank account up to £85,000. Um, so say you've got £100,000 in Barclays, Barclays falls over, the government will give you £85,000 back. Um, do I think that um, this is the same as 2008 and there's a risk of banks falling over? Not at this point. But would I have more than £85,000 with any one bank at this particular time? And that's not per account, that's per bank. Um, no, I wouldn't. So I would be spreading my cash around to make sure that um, every bank held a maximum of £85,000 of my money just in case. Okay, so good advice there. For those of you who have sat on quite large cash reserves, um, you know, to, to spread your risk, look at the, the government's advice and guidance. Um, is, is it still 85,000? Um, just to clarify, Angus, do you, do you know? Uh, yes, I'm pretty sure it's 85,000. Yeah, it's it's for investments, I think it's 50. Right, okay. Cool. OK, so, um, guys, we've got about five minutes left. If there's any last questions, make sure you get them in the comments below. Um, we're scrolling through and having a little look and, and seeing if we can answer everything. I think we've covered most of the topics that have been raised so far, but um, you've got a couple of couple of last questions. Angus, what, what are your sort of wrapping up? What are your what are your thoughts? What's going through your head as a as an investor now with a portfolio looking to obviously take whatever opportunities come? What, what are you thinking? Um, so I'm making sure I understand my uh, portfolio inside out. You, you know, if you'd asked me three weeks ago, do I know the jobs of all my tenants? I would have said no. If you ask me now, then yes, I do. Um, I, I'm certainly taking a more hands-on approach and really spend a lot more time talking to my agents to understand what they're doing and maybe passing some ideas to them about what I would like them to do in relation to my portfolio, which perhaps they can roll out more widely. So I'm definitely taking a far more hands-on approach. Um, I'm doing the analysis I talked about earlier to try and understand the risk uh, of non of non payment. But as I say, we've had some really positive news this week um, in terms of the government backing up wages. And I completely agree with you, Ross, that there has to be something coming down the line for gig economy workers, zero hours, contract workers, self-employed workers to provide them with a bit more support. Um, although I understand it's harder, so maybe it's taken a bit longer. Um, I'm just sitting on my hands right now, but I'm kind of itching because I know that there's going to be great opportunities yeah. um, coming up in the next, um, you know, kind of 12 months or so. Um, I completely agree with uh, Mark in terms of what he said the other night in terms of don't, you don't want to catch a fallen knife. You want to wait till it's, fall to, it's fell to the ground. But as soon as it's, it's fallen to the ground, then I'm getting in there and I'm picking it up. Um, as many times as I possibly can do. Um, so I'm, you know, kind of. I think that um, I actually think that there's really concern and health issues. But as I said before, I think this could be possibly the opportunity of a decade to pick up really good properties. And it's a really short window that's going to be coming up, but it's really going to be the window um, for educated investors because no one else, you know, there won't be that many people doing what we're doing. You know. You sometimes have to fight against a lot of competition. I very much doubt that 90% plus that competition is going to be there once the dust settles. Certainly for, um, you know, kind of that kind of window of maybe six to 12 months uh, once we've got over the, the, the kind of health crisis. Yeah. I think the, uh, somebody's mentioned in the comments here, Warren Buffett, uh, they mentioned the Warren Buffett quote, I'm not sure which one, um, but the one that springs to mind for me is uh, be fearful when others are greedy and be greedy when others are fearful. Um, maybe not quite the way Asset Academy would express it in terms of our values. Um, you know, we're, we're not greedy, but we are there to spot the opportunities. 
Um, you know, there will be, I think, a dip in house prices as confidence falls. Um, people who, as you say, not perhaps educated in the same way as us uh, will react. There will unfortunately be obviously people who are, are losing their jobs and have to make decisions that they maybe wouldn't necessarily make. Um, I suspect on top of all the other um, legislative changes the government have introduced in the last few years, the amateur landlord will just think, you know, what am I doing? Um, I need to get out of this game. It's too risky. And that will be our opportunity to, to take you out on a mentorship, to to look at the opportunities and to help make sure that you're, you know, you're building um, your own wealth for, you know, your own income base, your, your asset, uh, income producing assets for the future, you know, so that in 10 years time, when there's another pandemic, another crash, another recession, um, you know, you're, you're in a great position um, as, as, an, as a student of Asset Academy. Um, last question from you then, Angus. One of the, um, one of the things that we've, we've all been talking about each night is what we're doing individually to keep, uh, keep our minds positive, particularly as we, we become more and more restricted. Um, at Asset Academy, we, yes, we do the wealth education, but we also do a lot of personal development. What, what are your thoughts on how you, you're going to get through the next 12 weeks uh, on a mental uh, mental note rather than just business? Yeah, I think you know. I, I think I think it, it, it's a, it's it's kind of a tough time. I mean, I'm a little bit like a Labrador uh, in terms of I just like being outside all the time, chasing sticks and getting fresh air. So you know, it's it's kind of it's a bit tough um, in that sense um, for me personally, but I think um, it's a fantastic opportunity to, you know, how many other times are you going to have an opportunity to spend this much time at home um, with, you know, kind of people you love, your family, um, you know, to, um, to not have that extra time, maybe commuting to work or not being able to work at all. Um, so it's a fantastic time to, uh, kind of just uh, you know kind of just slow down a bit in, in what's a very fast world and just then maybe en enjoy the stuff around you that you take for granted a little bit more certainly doing a bit more of that um, um, I think it's a it's a great opportunity to do all those things that you never get around to doing it's a fantastic opportunity for um, you know you to feed your mind um, you know be that with personal development stuff but also property stuff so that you are in a position to take advantage of what's coming in uh, the near future um, so I think I think you know kind of um, you know if you're coming on um, a mentorship and you're not a key worker and stuff um, you know I'm not expecting you to turn around and tell me you've had no time to prep and you, you know research this research that because otherwise I'm going to be asking you what you've been doing for the past 12 weeks um, so I think you know great opportunity there to, to feed your mind, but also just to spend time with your family because, you know, in effect, for a lot of people, um, yes, it's it, you can't go anywhere, but it is a bit of, it's almost like you're, it's an enforced career break. So enjoy it because this might never come around again in your lifetime. Yeah, absolutely. So you'll see, guys, there's a bit of a thread with all of us that, that are talking. You know, we're all doing a similar thing. We're all talking about um, the gratitude. We're all talking about working a bit on our business, but also as Angus said there, taking a bit of time, just reflecting on uh, having, having a bit of time with the family, um, remembering why we've done what we've done. <clears throat> Certainly for me, um, you know, as somebody who, who's been with Asset Academy for a number of years now, it's certainly reinforced to me the value of um, both the personal development, the support, but also um, re reassuring, you know, it's, it's given me positive um positive reflection that the decision to invest in education and be part of a network like this was the right decision uh, you know and I appreciate there's going to be people watching this at all sorts of different levels some of you uh, will have been around for 15 16 years with Asset Academy some of you may well just have joined and I think really you know, we, we appreciate that perhaps the newer students that are with us may be a little bit more nervous um, perhaps haven't built their portfolio um, to quite the level that they would have liked to just yet because of you know they've only been around for with us for six months but really what i, I guess we want to reassure people is you know asset academy going to be here we're going to be looking out for you the the mentor team the coaches the trainers there's over 200 of us here to support you um whether it's the facebook live q and a's like this the we're looking at the technology to stream the courses um until <clears throat> we get back to normal so there's a huge amount of support in one place you know, we're a big family. We do look out for each other. 
Um, and, and that's really, we want to leave you with that kind of positive message that you're not on your own. We will be drip feeding you things to do, whether you're a brand new investor or whether you're five, 10 years down the line, you will have different challenges, but but everybody's going to have a challenge. Um, and, and we're going to be there to, to help you look at what to do with your portfolio, whether that's a defense strategy on what you've currently got whether it's an attack strategy on getting going, getting your first one sorted once the mentorships are back up and running. So a couple of quick questions here about uh, mentorships going ahead. Mentorships certainly for April have been postponed. Um, the help desk are contacting students individually to rearrange those once uh, everything's back to normal. Um, as we've said, the advanced courses, Asset Academy are looking into how we can uh, live stream some of those. We're also looking at how we can provide extra resources to you over the next few months to make sure there's plenty for you to do. Um, don't forget the Q&As uh, that we're continuing to run. Uh, the, the, the participants and the times for this week up until Wednesday have been scrolling along the screen at the bottom uh, for the whole of this session. So I think um, that's really going to be all for us. Uh, I think we've answered all of the questions that have been put up here. I've, I've scrolled back and forward and uh, I think, Angus, unless there's anything that you think we've we've missed in the last couple of minutes? No, I don't think so. No, not for me. Great. OK, so guys, look, um, stay healthy. That's the first thing. Um, stay positive. Pick up the phone. Talk to family and friends. Don't get isolated. Um, don't let the weeds set in, you know, keep keep this fed with positive stuff, um, you know, and we, as I said, we're going to be here for you. Uh, we've got a family here of 200 plus trainers, mentors, coaches, um, you know, we're, we're going to be there to help you through the next few weeks, months and years. Um, Angus, last word to you. Uh, what do you think we should be leaving students with? I think, actually, I think one interesting fact there is um, there's a lot of people you know, kind of in the family who've um, been in, involved in property for a long time. And yeah, a lot of people haven't seen something like this before, but I tell you what, nobody um, who I've come across is panicking. Nobody who I've come across um, is especially worried because um, they've invested the right way and um, they've got support around them if they get stuck. And that applies to everybody who's in this group, you know, kind of you've got support around you. And um, if you want it, if you, if you ask for help, you know, kind of in the Facebook group it'll come. But nobody's worried. I think everybody may be worried from a health perspective and worried about their loved ones, but from a property perspective, um uh, I think I think the future is, is 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 generally bright. And I think you know just take this opportunity to really kind of um just enjoy yourself a bit. You know what I mean? Enjoy yourself and all the worry and you know don't listen to all all the bad news. Stay up to date with the facts, okay, but you don't need to have the bad news on the telly and all the time. Enjoy the people around you. Enjoy your surroundings as best you can. And make, make the best make the best of this opportunity. Um, and I think you, you know, kind of, and for the people who are struggling a bit more, as I say, there's, there's plenty of support out there. You ju you've just got to reach out. Yeah, great stuff. Okay, thanks, Angus. Um, we're going to say goodbye now. So thanks very much, everybody. Tune in uh, tomorrow night for uh, Kim Fabian and Tracy Cartland answering Q and A's. Tuesday is Rohan and Harminda covering fear and anxiety and how to manage that. And then uh, on Wednesday, we have got, let me just remind myself, um, we have got Caroline and Nick Clayden, uh, who will be talking as well, uh, answering the Q&A. So, guys, 7 o'clock every evening this week, there'll be two people on here sharing their thoughts and keeping you positive. And that, that's the smile. I think Angus has just seen the comment there about yeah, uh, give us a smile. <laughs> um, right. All right. Thanks very much, guys. Thanks, Angus. And, uh, Thanks, Ross. Thanks, guys. See you soon.